The alleged final movie in the Jurassic Park slash Jurassic World franchise is coming out later this year. It's coming out in June, I believe. And earlier this month, which is February, the trailer for this film dropped. Now, I love Jurassic Park. It's one of my favorite movies. I do not care for the Jurassic World franchise. But the movie theater people will still get their $10 from me because I feel obligated to see the Jurassic World films because of my love for Jurassic Park. Usually the way it happens is like, I go see a Jurassic World movie and I'm like disappointed and angry. So I just go and rewatch Jurassic Park as a palate cleanser. So all things being equal, I will see Jurassic World Dominion in theaters. Now Jurassic World Dominion is obviously part of a large blockbuster series and I like to make predictions of things I think are going to happen in big blockbuster sequel films. I think that's fun. And I also like bingo because I think bingo is also fun. I'm aware that I'm not the only person that formats movie predictions like this. I am well aware of that. But that being said, here is my bingo card prediction of things I think are going to happen in Jurassic World Dominion. First thing I think is gonna happen is my free space, something I'm almost 100% positive is going to happen. I think someone is going to try and blow up a dinosaur. The Jurassic World movies are action movies, which like, Okay, um, so there's a lot of guns and explosions in these films. I think that someone is going to try and blow up a dinosaur. The way that I think it's going to happen is that some large dinosaur will like have its mouth open and they'll throw like a bomb or a stick of dynamite into the dinosaur to try and blow it up. I think that there are quite a few dinosaurs this could be attempted with, but uh, I would say probably like the Mosasaurus or the Quetzalcoatlus are, are probably the big money ones that I think they're gonna try and blow up. Okay, my first actual prediction is that there's going to be a Dilophosaurus kill specifically staged as a callback to Dennis Nedry's death in Jurassic Park. The Dilophosaurus is back, baby. My favorite dinosaur from the franchise is finally back. We have not seen the Dilophosaurus on screen in earnest since Jurassic Park. So like for some perspective, like never in my living lifetime has the Dilophosaurus been on the big screen for a newly released Jurassic Park, Jurassic World film. I'm very excited about that. Very excited. I think we're going to get a kill from the Dilophosaurus that is almost identical to the kill of Dennis Nedry in Jurassic Park because Colin Trevorrow, who's the writer, director, producer of these films, seems to be very into callbacks. Um, quite a few of my predictions actually have to do with callbacks. I say that because I know that he was kind of involved with um, the last Star Wars movie that came out when it was called Duel of the Fates. He like wrote the script for that. And um, although they changed quite a bit for it for Rise of Skywalker, the final film that did come out, he did kind of like play a hand. And that film had a lot of callbacks in it to previous films in the Star Wars franchise, specifically A New Hope. Also, just from the trailer, it seems apparent, like they've got Laura Dern in this outfit that is pretty thematically similar to the outfit she wears in Jurassic Park. Callbacks can be good, but a lot of the times they're not. So that's my thoughts on that. Basically, I think the Dilophosaurus is going to be with someone who underestimates them because it's littler than like some of the other dinos and um, they get caught in tight corners and spit on and eaten. Prediction two, Ellie and Alan romance. Their interaction in the trailer implies that they haven't spoken in a while. I think that Alan Grant specifically mentions them catching up. And everyone knows that they should have gotten together at the end of Jurassic Park. That's one of the biggest letdowns from Jurassic Park 3 is the reveal that Ellie Sattler has some business husband and like isn't married to Alan Grant. Big letdown. So I think that they could course correct that in this film by having them get together. Um, I don't know, maybe Ellie will be like divorced. I don't think they'll make her a widow, but I, you know, it's been, it's been a while. Marriages fall apart. Maybe her marriage fell apart and she could like get with Alan Grant. Um... I think that would be good, and I think it's going to happen. Kelly and Sarah will be name dropped by Ian Malcolm. They won't actually be in the film. They'll just be name dropped. I specifically think that they'll be name dropped because this movie is all about like dinosaurs being on the mainland, which was a thing that happened in Jurassic Park 2. 
So I think that that will prompt like a, a recalling of like the San Diego incident and will um, maybe get a, a reference or a mention of like what Kelly and Sarah are doing. Um, for those of you that don't know, Sarah is like the kind of love interest for Ian Malcolm in Jurassic Park 2 and Kelly is Malcolm's daughter. So I think they'll be mentioned but only in name. No one from Jurassic Park 3 will be in this film. I just don't think this will happen. I just don't think they'll be in it. Like, Trevorrow so far seems to only acknowledge the existence of the first Jurassic Park, not Jurassic Park 2 and 3. And my understanding was that the Jurassic World franchise was a sequel to the entire Jurassic Park franchise and not like a soft reboot. I already feel like my previous prediction of like, we're gonna have Sarah and Kelly mentioned is like a stretch. I would be so shocked if anyone from Jurassic Park 3 is mentioned. Like, I just don't think it'll happen. Like there is not a chance in hell that the other Jurassic Park films, specifically Jurassic Park 3, are gonna be referenced in Jurassic World Dominion. I think part of this is maybe um, there's this idea I try, I, I think I first saw it on like t a Twitter thread and I tried to find it so I could credit the person that came up with it. But um, basically it's this idea that like Jurassic World and its sequels takes place in a different timeline than the Jurassic Park sequels. Specifically the scene in Jurassic Park where Ellie and Hammond are sitting in the uh, welcome center and they're like eating the melted ice cream and having a conversation about the park. And Hammond's like, once we get back online and like once we have control of the park again, things will be fine. And Dr. Sattler's like, you never had control of the park. That's the thing. Like, it was all an illusion. This place was too powerful and it shouldn't exist. Like, you were never in control, so you can never regain control. And the idea is basically that the Jurassic Park sequels take place in a timeline where Hammond understood what Ellie was saying and like agreed. And the Jurassic World films take place in a timeline where he didn't get what she was saying and decided to continue with making Dinosaur Islands. I think it's pretty cool. I think that's um, a really unique take on the franchise and I really like that idea. And I think especially if Jurassic Park 2 and 3 are not mentioned in any of the Jurassic World films, that's like almost confirmation of this fan theory, TBH, at least in my books. Next prediction, Dr. Wu will reveal a new Lysine contingency. In the original Jurassic Park, there was this thing called the Lysine contingency, which was basically that none of the dinosaurs produced the amino acid Lysine, so it was only in their system from eating lysine rich foods provided by the park workers. And this was a contingency plan in case any of the dinosaurs ever got off island, they would die. It's a really cool idea, except lysine is a non-essential amino acid, which means that your body doesn't produce it anyways. Like the only way you get lysine is from eating things. Like that's how everyone gets lysine in their system. And then we see in the Jurassic Park sequels that the lysine contingency doesn't work because you have the dinosaurs on Isla Sorna and they're like thriving. So the lysine contingency, which I think was an important thing for them to have in the dinosaurs, like didn't work. So my prediction is that having known that, if we're assuming like these movies are all direct sequels, Dr. Wu, when creating the new batch of dinosaurs for the Jurassic World uh, generation of, of the park, would have implemented something similar that did actually work. There's going to be some kind of like biochemical whatever that's going to play a role in the dinosaurs being killed. Lex is not mentioned at all. Ariana Richards, who played Lex Murphy in Jurassic Park, has retired from acting. She retired from acting in like the early 2000s, 2010s. So she doesn't do acting anymore. It's possible that they like invited her back and she said that she would come back in like a cameo capacity. I think that's possible, but I think it's much more likely that she isn't in the film and they just don't even mention her. Conversely, I think Tim will show up in the final third of the film. Joseph Mazzello, who played Tim Murphy in Jurassic Park, is still acting. The most recent things you've probably seen him in, um, he was Dustin Moskovitz in The Social Network. He played John Deacon in Bohemian Rhapsody, and he played 
Paul Begala in Impeachment American Crime Story. I can guarantee I didn't pronounce that last name correct, and everyone that was actually alive during the Clinton impeachment is going to clown on me for that. But you know what? It is what it is. I think Tim will show up, and I think that he won't be in a lot of the film, but I think that he will be important to the plot. Like, I think he will play a vital role in the climax of the film. He has like a little cameo in Jurassic Park The Lost World. Tim and Lex both show up a little bit at the start of that film, but like every other living character from Jurassic Park has pulled up and had like at least some kind of supporting role in a Jurassic Park Jurassic World sequel. So it's kind of mean that they haven't invited him. It is possible that like they did ask him back at some point and he was like, no, I have done things besides Jurassic Park. Like, I don't want to always be known for this role I had as a little kid. But I think it's more likely they just haven't asked him. Herbivore murder. Yeah, I think a herbivore is going to kill someone. Most herbivore dinosaurs are huge. They're huge. Look at them. Look at them. They're ginormous. They need to kill someone. They need to, like, rampage and, like, step on people and like destroy houses. I want a herbivore to wreak havoc and take some people out. I want there to be some casualties from like a Diplodocus or like a Brachiosaur just like walking. I That's what I want. It's shocking that it hasn't been a thing in one of these films yet. To prove my point, we're gonna play a little game here, play along at home. How many people a year do you think are killed from shark attacks? Do you have that number? It's five. On average, five people are killed by sharks every year. How many people a year do you think are killed by elephants? It's 500. So yeah, there needs to be some herbivores causing death. I look forward to that. Return of the Compsognathus. They brought back my beloved Dilophosaurus. They can bring back my beloved Compsognathus. We haven't seen the Compies since... Jurassic Park 2. I would like to see them again. Please. Dilophosaurus versus Velociraptor. They're dinosaurs of about the same size, and they're also two of the, like, OG Jurassic Park dinosaurs. The OG Jurassic Park only has really a handful of dinosaurs in it. You've got the Triceratops, you've got Velociraptor, T-Rex, you've got Gallimimus, you've got Brachiosaurus, and Dilophosaurus. That's not that many. And of those, only three of them kill people. And we get to see the Velociraptors and T-Rex duke it out. I think it would be cool if the Dilophosaurus was invited to the next tussle. Hybrid dinosaur is the big bad. Trevorrow keeps like moralizing the dinosaurs in the Jurassic World franchise. He does it in the first one with the Indominus Rex, and he does it in the second one with the Indoraptor. And I have spoken in other YouTube videos about how I thought the plot twist with the Indominus Rex in the first one was going to be that it was part human, and like that's why it was evil. Like the real villain is man. In the first Jurassic Park, there is a scene where Lex and Tim and Dr. Grant are like in a tree, they're about to sleep. It's when they're in the trees with like the Brachiosauruses. And Lex is like, are these meat eaters? And they're like, no, they're herbivores, it's okay. And she's like, well, I hate the other kind. I hate the meat eater dinosaurs because, you know, to be fair, they did just get attacked by a T-Rex. But Dr. Grant's like, you know, they're not evil, they're just animals. Like they're just doing what animals do. And that's kind of the point is like the dinosaurs in Jurassic Park aren't supposed to be evil. They're literally just animals. Like, like that's kind of the point. Uh, but Trevorrow doesn't seem to get that and he keeps like writing antagonistic dinosaurs. So I think that we're gonna have another hybrid dinosaur in this film and it is also going to be morally bad. Claire is pregnant. Yeah, I think it's gonna be revealed that Claire is pregnant and Owen is the father and it's going to be used as like a raising of the stakes moment. It just feels like something that they would do in, in these Jurassic World films. They would have that be a thing because then it's like sadder if one of them dies. It'll It's like, well, we have to protect Claire because she's with child. And now if Owen dies, like that's sad because he has a kid on the way. 
allegedly it makes the audience care more. Chris Pratt dies. Yeah, I partially think they're going to do this because of my previous prediction where I think they're going to have Claire be pregnant. They're going to have Owen die as like a hero's death. And he'll die shortly after the reveal that she is pregnant because it's like sadder that way, I guess. He'll die a hero's death in like the last 10 minutes of the film. And I think that he will do it protecting someone. I think specifically Claire or Maisie, who's like the little clone child from the last Jurassic World movie. Or it'll be like a like a suicide mission where like one person has to go like activate a bomb or like a toxic gas or something and like they'll die, but they'll save everyone else. I think that's how he'll go. Little clone girl dies. Yeah, I think they're gonna kill off Maisie because she's a clone, just like the dinosaurs. That was the like stupid plot reveal in uh, the last Jurassic World movie that I didn't like. And because of that, because she's like made the same way, I think that she's going to die, not from being killed, but from some kind of like sickness or like deficiency within her genes. It'll play a role in like the way that they can kill off the dinosaurs. It'll be like, oh, they have this like amino acid deficiency or this like allergy or something. And because Maisie has it, or she'll have like something in her blood, you know, that, that'll that make it so that it clues them in on how they can take out the dinosaurs. There hasn't been a child killed off in this series yet. There's like a fair amount of death in the Jurassic Park, Jurassic World films, but never a child. None of the children characters are ever killed off. And I think Trevorrow sees himself as like kind of edgy. So this feels like an edgy move that he would do is to kill off little girl character that no one cares about. That's mean. Some people probably care about her. I don't. Claire's nephews from Jurassic World 1 are not even mentioned. I don't think Zack or Grey will be in this film, which is so weird to me. Like they played a fairly prominent role in Jurassic World. And it is kind of a staple of these films that like each one has a new child character um, because it gives the adult characters like someone to care about and have to protect. So, you know, plot. But they weren't in Jurassic World 2, even as a cameo. There's that scene at the beginning of Jurassic World 2 where like Claire's working at a nonprofit to save the dinosaurs and they're like making phone calls to like senators and we didn't even get like the older of the two boys in the background, like making a call, like he's an intern at his aunt's nonprofit or something. We didn't even get that. So I just think they won't be in it. Maisie's gonna be in this one, like she's in the trailer and this is gonna be like the first time ever in this series that main child character carries over into a sequel film in a capacity that's more than just like a cameo. They could totally have the boys in it. They're like both in their 20s now. So they're like young adults. Like they could write them in, but I don't think they will. And they won't even be mentioned. Like they'll be talking about like family because I think they're going to reveal that like Claire is pregnant and they won't even mention like her family of like her sister and nephews and stuff. Like, no, they're not even going to be named. Dinosaur dog sled. The trailer has this shot of all these Parasaurolophuses like in the snow, running. And I love the idea of a dinosaur pulled sled in a snowy tundra. It could be part of some commentary on like, now the dinosaurs are in our world and like we need to learn to adapt to be with them. You know, get that dinotopia thing going where like the people and dinosaurs coexist. So this could maybe be like an instance of that towards the argument of like the dinosaurs aren't all bad. I think that would be really cool. If you'll allow me a tangent, over winter break, I went with a decent chunk of my family to this Christmas dinosaur thing in my hometown. And out front, they had moved like the Compsognathus um, animatronics from inside to be outside pulling a sled that also had a velociraptor as part of it. Insert picture here. I loved that. And uh, I would love to see something similar in the Jurassic World film. A decent chunk of the film will take place in Montana. Some of the shots from the trailer, it looked, you know, snowy and there are mountains and stuff and like valleys. That's Montana. That's what the state looks like. Montana also has a lot of dinosaur bones in it. And it would be another callback to the first Jurassic Park film 
because uh, Dr. Sattler and Dr. Grant are at a dig site in Montana at the start of the film. Someone loses a limb to a dinosaur. I just think that would be fun, you know, chomp good snack for the dino. You know, these films don't have like a ton of gratuitous violence in them. Um, there's there's not a lot of gore in them really. So I think that could be fun. Call back to when dinosaurs ruled the earth scene in Jurassic Park. As I've said, callbacks are all the rage now. And that's a pretty iconic end shot from the first Jurassic Park film when the T-Rex and the velociraptors are like screaming in the welcome center and the big banner like falls down. I think we're gonna have some kind of dino themed banner falling over another large dinosaur as it screams and it'll be like ironic or whatever. I wouldn't be surprised if it's literally just like a shot for shot recreation in a new location where another banner that says when dinosaurs ruled the earth falls in front of another T-Rex as it screams. They might use another dino for this callback and surprise me, but I won't hold my breath. Saddled Triceratops. This kind of goes along with the dinosaur dog sled where like it'll be an instance of showing how the dinosaurs can coexist and benefit humans. You know, I think this film is gonna try and be in some ways kind of like the Dinotopia books. And I think there was also a movie adaptation, you know, where like the dinosaurs and people live in harmony, <sighs> the best place. That's the universe I wanna be born into next time is the Dinotopia universe. Also the Triceratops, it's kind of like the Dewback from Star Wars. Like they're both big, round. I think it would work. Archaeopteryx, not the clothing store. The trailer shows a Quetzalcoatlus with like feathers on it, and I think also a feathered Velociraptor. So, you know, there are clearly going to be some feathered dinos in this movie. And before you come for me in the comments, yes, I'm aware that things like the Quetzalcoatlus and the Pterodactyl and the Pterodon aren't technically dinosaurs, they're flying reptiles, all right? But pop culture semantics, all right? Calm down. So it seems like they're leaning more into the feathered dinosaurs to be more like scientifically accurate or whatever. So I think that they will have the Archaeopteryx in this film because I believe the Archaeopteryx was the first like feathered dino remains that we found. I say we as if I am a paleontologist. You know, they everyone's seen the picture. He's like embedded in the uh, like stone, you know, I'll image. I don't know. I've seen some people online really excited about the feathered dinosaurs for this film. Um, I don't really care. I think it'll be cool because like we do know that they were feathered to an extent. So I think that'll be cool. But I also never really cared about the dinosaurs in Jurassic Park not having feathers because I always assumed that the reason they didn't have feathers was because they're not supposed to look like real dinosaurs. We're told in Jurassic Park that they filled in the missing DNA in the dinosaur DNA with frog DNA. And that's kind of why they look like that because they're like mixed with, what are frogs? Amphibians? So I don't think that they were supposed to be like historically accurate dinosaurs. They were supposed to be dinosaurs with some frog DNA in them. So I never really cared about them having feathered or non-feathered dinosaurs. I think it'll be cool. Um, I think it would be cooler if they were like animatronic feathered dinosaurs and not CGI. I have seen some behind the scenes stuff and it looks like they are using some animatronics and like puppets and suits for the dinosaurs in this film. So I am excited about that. But yeah, I think we'll have the Archaeopteryx make its uh, big screen debut in this film. Blue gets old yellered. In the trailer, we see Blue and her baby we love a strong mother uh, coming up to like Owen's cabin in the woods and kind of hissing at him. I think Blue's gonna like go feral or something and uh, she's gonna have to be put down. And I think she's going to be put down by Owen. Dr. Wu self-sacrifice. The Jurassic World movies have decided to make Dr. Wu kind of a villain in these films. I don't know, that always felt a little weird to me because I never thought of Dr. Wu as a villain in the Jurassic Park film. Like, he just worked there, man. The only thing they do to, like, potentially, I guess, paint him as villainous is that um, he breeds raptors. Like, there's that exchange when they're in the breeding lab 
and the dinosaur hatches and Alan's like, what is this? And he's like, oh, it's a raptor. And we've like had that scene earlier in the film to tell us that raptors are like really smart and can kill people. And we had that scene at the beginning of the film of a raptor killing a guy. That's really the only like sketchy thing he did, but like he's not in charge of things. Like I imagine he made the raptor because he was told to make the raptor. But Jurassic World has decided to make him like kind of a villain. He's at least I think supposed to be more morally gray than the other characters. He's a little more um, about protecting himself, which like respect, respect. It's a cutthroat world, the uh, dinosaur DNA world. So you gotta look out for yourself. But because of this, I think that they will have him die as a self-sacrifice in this film as a means of like redemption. Like he'll lure away some mercenaries or dinosaurs so that our other protagonist characters can do something that is important to the plot. Like once again, he'll do that like hero's death of self-sacrifice. I believe he dies in the Jurassic Park book. Like I think he is eaten by velociraptors in the book. I haven't read the book cause I'm a fake fan. And my final prediction for this film I won't hate the movie. I'm not even asking to like it. I just want to not hate it. I don't really like Jurassic World. It's, uh, I don't like it. And I really don't like Jurassic World 2. Like, I remember I watched it and I was like, I hate this. And then I rewatched Jurassic Park as a palate cleanser. So my hope for this film is that I don't hate it, is that I leave it going, yep, that was okay. And I maybe rewatch Jurassic Park because I'm like, oh man, I'm in a dinosaur watching mood and not because I hated that movie so much. I need to watch a good film from this franchise. So there, that's my bingo prediction. And uh, I guess we'll see how many of them are right. Um, I hope I get a blackout and all of my predictions are true. Did you notice that I went this whole video without actually saying the name of the second Jurassic World movie? That's because I don't know what it's called. Let's Google. Let's Google. Jurassic World 2. Fallen Kingdom. Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom. A forgettable name for a forgettable movie. What does that mean? It's true. It's true. <laughs> 